It is a shame that we had to call for this event to occur. It is outrageous that there were people, including our own mayor, who had the nerve to go to the General Assembly to suggest that the highest court in our land, the Supreme Court's definitive ruling, should be undermined with retroactive legislation. So it's a shame that we had to be here, but your strength, your voices are being heard. Only this afternoon, we received a preliminary report that the General Assembly is not going to follow Bill Finch's lead. Yeah. We thank you all for being here. We have a short but diverse panel of speakers to address us who represent thousands of Bridgeporters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many of you are teachers who have already put in a long, hard day working with our children, and you've sacrificed more of your personal time to be here because the issues that we're fighting for are important for Bridgeport, are important for democracy, and are important for communities throughout the state of Connecticut. So we want to thank all of the teachers who are here. As a parent, a pastor, and partner in community leadership, as well as a participant in democracy in Bridgeport. When I heard of this event this afternoon, I thought it was only a part of my responsibility to be to lend my voice in the chorus of voices that we might declare our right to have the special election for the Bridgeport Board of Education. I am reminded that yesterday marked the 47th anniversary of what was called Bloody Sunday. This was Sunday, March the 7th, 1965, when many shed blood in their attempt to march across the Pettus Bridge from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama for the rights of blacks or Negroes, as they were called back then, to vote. There were those in local government, as well as the local business establishment, who sought to block them from the right. But those marchers were determined not to allow anything or anybody to stop them as citizens from exercising their rights to vote. And now, some 47 years later, we stand right now to declare that the Supreme Court has ruled that the state reconstitution of Bridgeport Board was illegal. And while I respect the efforts of the current board to address the myriad of issues facing the district, it's time to move forward and make preparations for the special board elections to occur. Clean elections, I say, yeah. where candidates where candidates are vetted through community forms, where we and they can understand what we should expect for them, what's reasonable to expect from them, where we, they can work with our superintendent to ensure that our children receive what they deserve, quality education from quality teachers such as yourselves and administrators and receive that education in quality facilities. Therefore, I join our and others in calling for Governor Malloy to abandon this campaign of to lobby state lawmakers to remove this requirement. For we know that as Brother Medina shared, that it is a slippery slope that they were trying to travel on the backs of Bridgeporters. I'm calling on our legislators and I'm thanking the legislators who took leadership before we got the verdict. Representative Hennessy, Represent Senator Gomes, and Representative Clemens for their work, their leadership in standing with us. I'm calling on, and I know we're calling on, Mayor Finch to give leadership to this city, to unify this city, to not divide us so that we can 
care for our children, and preserve the right to vote all at the same time. And finally, I'm calling on us Bridgeport residents. We have a second chance. Let's not blow this second chance. Let's show this state that we know how to run a clean election and elect men and women who will serve us and serve our community. Thank you. You know, I'd just like to say I'm so happy and grateful that they've decided to go in a different direction. But I want you to keep your eyes open. Yeah. And I want you to stay on the watch because everything that's done in the name of our children is not always from our, for our children. It's about the bottom line. They put money in front of our children. But also be careful for what else is in that bill. We have to stay on the watch. You know, I don't know if you remember, but someone said democracy does not work for everybody. And this was a really great example of why they believe that. And we have to remember that we have elected people to represent us. And if they don't believe that democracy is for all, don't send them back. Amen. You've got an election Amen. year. You've got a senator from Trumbo who could possibly represent more of a Bridgeport than his own town. Think about that. Send people up there who are going to represent the interests of our children. Because at the end of the day, it's all about, for us, our children and not the bottom line. We do what we need to do. The teachers do what they need to do. The voters have to get out and make themselves be heard. We believe in democracy. We do not believe in a dictatorship. And we will follow that. Stay on the watch. Yeah. We're here today to uphold our inalienable rights, our civil rights, and our democracy. We, the citizens of Bridgeport, deserve more from our elected officials. And I say our elected officials. And whether it is by one vote or by a handful of those registered to vote and choose to exercise their rights, it is still democracy and democracy works. And it works fair. And it is the will of the people. Our children need to know we are a democratic society and we are here to preserve their rights. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This pattern of thought is prevalent as we see Congress convening hearings on women's issues with no women present or local entities staging a coup d'etat to dissolve our Board of Education or an attempt by the state administration to change a state statute to overturn the state Supreme Court's six to one decision to return the duly elected board to power. I say, what kind of mess is this? As a, as a public, the voters, it is necessary that we demand that our elected officials walk alongside us to preserve democracy, not dismantle it, this country was built by the will of the people, not the rantings of an individual. And Thomas Jefferson said, when the governor, government fears the people, there's liberty. When the people fear the government, there's tyranny. What I say to you today is let's have liberty and liberate our city from the tyrannical change that this administration is attempting to bind us. Uh, I'm a proud parent of a, of a uh, Bridgeport school graduate. My daughter graduated from Central High School. Her kindergarten teacher, Mary Beth Lang, is right back here from Madison School. Um, my daughter loved to be a Bridgeport student, is still here in Bridgeport working in the community, and it's a wonderful community to be a part of. Um, I, I want to talk a little about what's going on. I teach fifth grade. In September we talk about the American Constitution, the three branches of government and what their responsibilities are. We talk about the news. Fifth grade's a wonderful age. Kids are starting to see the world and what's going on. And we talk about the news and what's happening in the world. And so when the Supreme Court ruled on Wednesday, great discussion. On Thursday, the discussion was, I'm sorry, on Wednesday after they said this, they said, well, does this mean that the executive branch broke the law? And the Supreme Court said so. And the answer was obviously, yes, this is true. The executive branch has broken the law. On Thursday, we talked about how there was an effort to now overturn that. And they asked the same question everyone else has asked. How can you do that? Um, and it shouldn't be done. And now, thanks to the support of all the people here, this won't be done. But, yeah. I get tired of hearing it's about the kids. Yeah. Yeah. We have worked for decades in this town right. to make these schools work for the kids of Bridgeport. It's not us that's stopping it. It's not the yeah. teachers. It's not the community. 
functional Board of Ed has been controlled by the Democratic machine for as long as I've lived here. That's why the schools don't work. We're not a priority for them. We need to make them make it a priority, and we know why this happened. Ten years ago, when Education First was about to take over the Board of Ed, suddenly the absentee ballots beat that effort. Now, when they met, it was a chance that they might lose control of the Board of Ed last fall, we suddenly have a coup d'etat organized by a whole bunch of insiders who had nothing to do with our city. Only one or two of them even live in the city. The rest of them all live outside the city. And that's just plain wrong. We yeah, should have a yeah. public discussion yeah. about this. Yeah. Shine the light of discussion. If they had that public discussion, they might not have wasted eight months and hundreds of thousands of dollars on this frivolous, um, frivolous fighting in the courts. And we might have had this answer last summer. Yeah. So I believe that we should have always public discussion. We should always shed the light on this. There's no point in having these backroom deals like they tried to pull again this week. And let's get the public out and have the public schools represent the public will of Bridgeport. Thank you. I have five children that are being educated in the Bridgeport school system at Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And you know the old saying, together we stand, divided we fall. We have to stand together on this. We will not be silent anymore. If we all come out and do what we have to do as Bridgeport residents, as taxpayers, as registered voters, they will not be able to shut us up. They will have no choice but to stand up and throw that old player's playbook out of the window and do what's right for us here in the city of Bridgeport. I encourage all parents, all community leaders, all anyone that lives in the city of Bridgeport, let's come together and let's get those. If they're not willing to do what we need them to do, let's get them out of here as well. Thank you. Yes. Go home tonight and tell people about the progress we're making, about the victory that appears to be ours today, but warn them that our opponents will not go away. We know their methods. Their methods are to go behind closed doors, to create conspiracies, to rely upon the powerful, and to assume that we are going to let it happen. We will not let this happen. We will stay strong. We will stay united. I want to echo what Marilyn said and what the pastor said. We must tell our elected representatives with the greatest respect, if you think we're not smart enough, if you think we're not dependable enough, if you think we're not trustworthy enough to elect our Board of Ed representatives, then why in the world should we vote for you? Let the message go out from this point right now that democracy is won, the conspiracy actors have lost, and this is just the first step. We will not rest here. Let us stay strong, let us stay united, and let us stay on the watch because we know that nothing less than our children are at stake and our city's future. So thank you all for coming. God bless. Keep up the good fight.